Good morning. Welcome to our worship this morning. It's uh, it's good to be together. We received a, a thank you this week, um, dear friends of Rockwood United. Thank you so much for your donation to Royal City Mission. We're grateful for your help, which allows us to serve so many struggling and well. In 2023, we served over 85,000 meals. We couldn't have done it without support from you. So, and, and I will say that on thanks to Cheryl, and on um, November 10th, we have a speaker coming from Royal City Mission, and she's going to share uh, where they're at and, and uh, folks might help and Stone has partnered with them this year so it's, it's a perfect timing. Uh, it'll be a combined service and it will be at 10 o'clock because it's a combined service on November 10th. So please keep that in mind. Um, thank you for uh, those of you that came to Stone last Sunday. We had a, a great uh, anniversary speaker in Greg Smith Young and a lovely lunch and um, the choir was beautiful and, uh, and some fun afterwards with the Food Greens wrap up. Um, if you are interested in supporting the Food Grades Wrap-Up, uh, Bill won't tell me, he just says we're behind last year. Um, but if, if it is something that you're passionate about and you would be willing to support uh, the project, they would be very grateful and it's important work uh, that helps people around the world that are uh, facing food scarcity and food insecurity. Uh, uh, also, thank you for supporting the roast beef dinner and at so the takeout dinner and the rockwood breakfast. How did you do yesterday? How many folks did you serve? A hundred. So what's the number you aim for? What is what's your magic number? <laughs> However we have. Okay. <laughs> I just heard some heads being put together and say, oh, we're at 73. <laughs> so, uh, but it's a hundred sounds wonderful, and it's, it's there's such a good feeling in there. Um, I heard some good news there that they were surprised I didn't know that Michelle Hawkins is engaged to be married. They yes. thought Grandma would have told us that. Yeah, <laughs> it's about time. She's like the grandfather and the grandmother. Uh, people thought we were never going to get engaged because we dated each other for five years. <laughs> Michelle and Jeremy have been together seven. <laughs> so, well, that was lovely news that came out yes, of the breakfast. We were all thrilled. Jeremy's a great cop. Yeah, and, and good feeling there. So uh, announcements uh, this week, we uh, will start Bible study Tuesday evening at 7 on Zoom, and we're looking at the parables of Jesus, so um, please keep that in mind. We'd love to have you join us. On Wednesday, the Finance and Stewardship Committee will meet on Zoom at 7, and I'll send you uh, a draft agenda this afternoon so that you know what we're looking at for that meeting. Men are invited to the Bearded Barista on Thursday at 10.30 for coffee. Uh, they stay usually from 10.30 till, till about noon, I think. Um, looking ahead, next Sunday is all, we're celebrating All Saints Sunday, and we're going to remember Roy Steinberg and Georgina Ferguson in our worship. If I missed a member of our church family, please let me know um, so that I can be prepared. We uh, will have a time of remembrance in Advent for our own families and friends, but this is particularly for those folks in our church family that we want to lift up. So we'll do that next Sunday. Um, and um, I mentioned Remembrance Sunday is at 10 o'clock. We're looking forward to the Rockwood, uh, the Outreaches Christmas Market on um, November 24th. So. Please keep that in mind, and if you want those beautiful outdoor Christmas arrangements, please get in touch with Marcia about that. Um, and bring your friends to the to the market. Uh, it would be great. There's always beautiful things for Christmas, and uh, we oh, we have supported through the outreach the. Um, Folks at East Wellington have their women's support program each year at Christmas with gift cards, and we know there's a lot more folks in need this Christmas. So, you know, invite others to come and join in, in this uh, work that we do. Uh, and then in our neighborhood, my Masa is having a murder mystery on uh, Saturday night. There's more information on the bulletin board if you're interested. They also uh, have an upcoming uh, series of traveling through the Roman Empire. Uh, 
So that's on Wednesday nights through November. And uh, Arco is having a holiday bazaar on September 9th from 9 till 3. Also, those of you that uh, follow the singing priest, Mark Curtis, he's going to be at St. James Anglican in Fergus next Sunday. So that's something else you might be interested in. Are there other announcements this morning? I just okay. wanted to mention that uh, you said that the holiday market is on November the 24th, and also that evening we have our annual carol sing. So, and I know that anything that isn't sold during the morning, the early afternoon, will still be there that evening. So you can combine the carol sing and some shopping too. Of course, all the good stuff will be gone, right? <laughs> you know but please bring friends to the carol sing as well. It's always a lot of fun. Thanks, Barb. We'll get ready next week. Christmas is sneaking up on you. Oh, <laughs> Are there announcements? Hello. Yes. Um, it's not really an announcement, but it's a request. I've uh, been approached by a lady that was our house sitter for pets a couple of years ago, and she's waiting for rent gear to income housing in well, so of course that's she's already been on the list for three and a half years, so again. So I'm asking uh, if anybody knows anywhere if a lady could park a tiny house. Uh, she approached me, um, this is someone that pet sat for us a couple of years ago. She's a very nice lady, she's a bit quirky, but uh, she's looking for, she has to wait several years for rent gear to income housing. She's already been on the list for three and a half years and she thinks she'll be waiting another five. So she has to find somewhere to live very urgently. So she had called me up yesterday looking for, you know, whether she could stay on our land. And we know we can't do that because of the bylaws and uh, finding uh, sewage for her to be able to look after that. But if anybody knows of anywhere, of any farm owners or people with land, uh, please let me know because I'm trying to help her out in the next couple of days. Thank you. Any other announcements? Good news to share. Please share grateful for. We, I am grateful for Friday night for John's cooking and uh, Lisa and Liz making dessert. We had 16 of us for Faith Food and it was a, a wonderful evening of talking about meeting God and, uh, and the, the real cool thing is I think the average age was under like 40 or something. So you know, our average age is usually about 72, I think, uh, if we do the math. So we had, uh, it was lovely to have Mark and Chloe and uh, Chloe's uh, brother and sister with us, and uh, Liam and Charisma were there, and it was a it was a great evening. We were talking about meeting God, and we got this. I said, "So, what are some names of God you have?" And uh, we got cool and awesome and uh, really really neat names. And and Brian had been reading the Quran, so he said that in the Quran there's over 90 names of God. So I sent him home to research it, and he came up with over 103 in the Bible. So. Uh, it was it was a great evening, and we hope that you'll watch and join us sometime. Oh, Case. Good news. So thankful for the whole cause. Mm. And it's almost over now, but it's, it's been fantastic. They're spectacular. And, and speaking of that, um, they're going to be around for a little while. I hope we're enjoying them. Um, but those of you that have winter pictures from last year, we'll be looking for those for Christmas cards again, and we'll looking be looking for Christmas cookies for um, the. 1st of December, the Saturday, whatever that Saturday is. And so if you're interested in baking cookies or you have um, pictures, please get those to me. So other, other news to share. And oh, we have a pride flag. One of my colleagues very sheepishly said, I got this a long time ago and didn't get it to you. And I said, that's okay, because we'll have to figure out where to put it. So, you know, we just saved us some um, angst. But uh, we did receive a pride flag from Western Ontario Waterways. So we will find a, a home for that. Um, any birthdays we should be celebrating? Well, it's sad for me at Stone, but a lot of people missed it here. <laughs> 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 I much prefer that too. Don't tell anybody it's my birthday. <laughs> anybody else has a birthday? Let's sing happy birthday to Ellen. Happy birthday.
talk to Ron Hawkins, and Michelle is engaged. So oh, we're excited to share oh, that news. Yes. They're getting married next October. Uh, this, I just want to say this is a big birthday day for us. Uh, my daughter, Sandy, uh, her birthday is uh, today. And uh, our, her son, our grandson, Logan, is today. And Mary Brander's birthday is today. <laughs>
Let us pray. Forgive us, patient parent, when we fail to see those in need who you place on our path. Show us how to care for all your children in need. Gracious God, hear our silent prayers as we confess those things that separate us from you and from each other. Friends, hear the good news as Jesus walked and taught the disciples. He walks and teaches us, and he offers us forgiveness and love. Thanks be to God. Please join me in our gospel reading from Mark 10, verses 46 to 52. We, and this morning we have men's voices in italics and women's voices in bold in italics, and then a place for all. And if you prefer uh, reading a different part, that's okay too. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large cloud were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. May God bless this reading to our understanding and our faithful living. Amen. Please join in singing How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds, 344. <laughs>
of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. So Jesus was on his way from Galilee to Jerusalem. It was nearing the time of the Passover, and at this time the roads would begin to fill up with people because every male of 12 or 13 years of age who lived within 24 kilometers of Jerusalem was expected to go to the temple for the festival. But people came from much further than that. And so the roads would begin to be filled up with people. And as groups traveled, they would often gather around a teacher and learn from him. People that had to work all days in the field or fishing wouldn't necessarily have as much time to learn as they would like. So this was an opportunity to gather and, and to hear someone as they walked. Early on in the journey, uh, Mark tells us that much to the other disciples' chagrin, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and asked him to do something for them, he, to say that he would do what, what they wanted. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? And they said, well, we want to be one on your right hand and one on your left in glory. And Jesus said, you don't know what you're asking. You can drink from the cup I drink from. You can be baptized with the baptism, which he was talking about his death on the cross. But I can't promise you this. As they, as they traveled, other people would have joined them. People would be listening. And as they got closer to Jerusalem, the streets would begin to be lined with people. Because there would be those people that were older, those people that weren't able to make the journey, people that had to stay home to look after a, a property or, or something. And those folks would line up on the way and they would wish the, the travelers well for Passover. And so there would be lots of people connecting with one another and talking. And through those crowds along the side, they would pass the word on. There's that Jesus of Nazareth everybody's been talking about. There's Jesus of Nazareth. And that word came to Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. He was sitting there wrapped in his cloak, his cloak that would have served as, as a purse or a pouch in the day to carry anything he had, which would have been very little. It would have been what he spread out in front of him to gather coins. It would be what kept him warm at night. It would be most of his possession. He heard that Jesus was in that crowd coming along, and he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the people traveling that wanted to hear Jesus didn't want to be bothered by this guy. And they said, shh, shh. And the people beside him, well, they don't want to draw attention. And, and besides, which, what's Jesus going to do for him anyway? Just be quiet. Just let, We want to hear Jesus. We don't want to hear you. And instead of listening to the crowd, Bartimaeus says, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus hears him. And he stops. And imagine all that movement, all those people talking on the sides, and, and all of a sudden, all those folks gathered around, Jesus stopped, and the people behind them need to stop. And I bet you the people in front of them stopped and turned around and wondered. And Jesus said, tell him to come to me. And all of a sudden the people are saying, well, well go, he's calling you, go see him. I mean, you know, get, get going. All of them are confused. All of them are wondering what's going to happen. Bartimaeus believes. And he throws off his cloak, that possession that is so important to him that if he remains blind, he's going to have a hard time finding amidst all those crowds of people and all the movement. But he trusted. He trusted that Jesus could do something for him. And so he went to Jesus. And when Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus replies, I want to see again. And Jesus says, go. Your faith has made you well. With his sight restored, he doesn't go look for that cloak. He doesn't go looking for what's behind him. He turns and follows Jesus, knowing that his whole world has been transformed. 
Often in the church, like the followers of Jesus, our focus can be turned inside. We can be worrying about the next uh, thing that needs to be repaired or where we're going to get enough money to pay that minister or all of those things, whether we're going to sell that darn piece of property that we've, we've been wrestling with. What, we have a lot of things that can cause us to turn and to look in. And, and sometimes people outside are critical of that. I know that uh, in, when I was growing up, the church was, was our whole world. And so when we would gather for family dinners, we would talk a lot about the church. And then my aunt moved away and our church wasn't so important to her anymore. In fact, no church was very important to her. And she'd say, all you ever do is talk about church. You just, you don't talk about anything else. You should get a life. You, 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 it's, <laughs> And, uh, and then I, I think I made the mistake one say, day of saying, oh, in the neighboring church, they have this great euchre club. It meets once a month, and it's been once a month since the church started, and they have this great community, and she's, well, was it church doing playing cards anyway? They're just a social club. They might have been, well, be the golf club, you know? And uh, it, it was a little hurtful, a little annoying. Um, the wider church in the last decades has looked in a lot too. We, uh, I was on the general council. I was reminded that we, we were the f general council executive were the first ones that made cuts and cut justice staff. And so we used to have people in the general council that could spend time um, studying genetically modified foods and putting out studies for the church. Well, we had to cut those positions because the church was getting smaller. We didn't have enough money. And, we received our share of criticism for those decisions. And then, and then we reorganized the general council and the uh, <coughs> regions, and we've had to spend a long uh, five years, and some before that, reorganizing, putting our energy, looking inward. So it's good to contemplate, even if, if we don't like where the words come from, where are we spending our energy? How are we serving God? Our, I think these criticisms miss the mark, but it doesn't hurt us to, to wonder, are, are we still being called to do the same things, or are we being called to something new? I'm not sure about you, but I have experienced God's presence, come to know Jesus more fully, learn to pray and worship, and found community in churches. That's where my faith has been nurtured. That's where I have found loving community. And, and so our churches matter. It's important. And in my role as minister, I often look at you and look at what we're doing because my hope is that I'm supporting you and I trust I'm supporting you to go out and carry your faith into the world. And I know you have been doing that. I know that when you were in hospitals and schools, you were in banks, you were caring for the people that you were serving in a way that would have been different if you didn't have God and Jesus in your life. And those folks on the farm are looking out and seeing the beauty of the creation and wanting to care for that earth because we see it as gift, not just something to be exploited. I bet the, the bell guy and the, uh, the landscaper have, have Jesus in mind too. I know that where you are in your work, in your community, in, in serving Habitat for Humanity and the Lions Club and al -Anon and all those places that you go out and you share yourself, that is a part of your faith being lived out in a particular way. And I'm so grateful for that. We also have, have things that we're doing inside. And, and in the past years, we've done, we did Into the Promise, a small group uh, from here and at Stone, uh, studied a book and, and reflected on how the church might be called to be something different. We did our affirming. And we thought about how we interact with our neighbors and the world around us. Greg Smith Young last week and others that have crossed our paths have invited us to look more particularly at our particular neighborhood. What kind of impact are we having in the world right around us? Not just through mission and service, not just through things that we reach out, but our immediate neighbors. Where are we touching them? And you are touching them. The uh, Brian said, 
I stood and watched while Lisa was waiting for you because you took so long at breakfast. Um, and I saw so many people that aren't a part of either of our churches coming to breakfast. People that are finding community here because you take the time to prepare delicious food and serve them. At Stone, the takeout dinners, the harvest table, the wellness series. Those are things that invite the people next to us to come to us in a different way. We've reached out to cluster with neighboring churches. We, you'll go, uh, some of you, on Remembrance Sunday and sing with the Anglican Church. Invite others to come for the World Day of Prayer and, and we're making ways to be seen in the community in ways that are different than we've done before. When I was on my sabbatical, I had a chance to visit different churches. I went to a number of United Churches. Some were, were great, some were, oh, I don't like singing all the hymns up front. That doesn't, that doesn't work for me, or listening to the hymns, I think, more than singing them. Um, uh, one, uh, one Sunday, I went to what I thought was the United Church service, and I carefully checked the doors. That's the Mennonite churches, so the United Church must worship over here. And I went in the door, and the Mennonite said, come join us. They're not worshiping this Sunday. And, uh, and so I joined uh, a bubbly Mennonite service. I lots of colleagues, good preaching. Um, it was good to be there, but it wasn't here. It was different. And one of the differences is our conversations, the opportunity to talk with one another, uh, the opportunity to question me sometimes if what I said didn't make sense or there was another way to hear it. The opportunity to share our faith. And it reminded me of when I was growing up, we, we had adult Sunday school. And uh, so before church, there would be lots of children, but there were lots of adults too. And we could get together and we could, we could talk about what we believe and put it into words and ask questions. And uh, when we first started those conversations, I was terrified you were going to ask me questions about the sermon. And now I realize it really doesn't matter because some questions just need to be left to percolate for a while and I don't need to have all the answers. But it gives us an opportunity to voice what we have here and to find the words that we might share it with other folks. Um, I was sharing in the conversation time with Elsa and Mary, um, that John and I were invited to attend an Al-Anon meeting this weekend, and we did that. And we were so grateful for the opportunity, and I've, I've attended AA once before. And uh, when you attend a 12-step meeting, there's a, a formula or a practice that happens all the same. And people always introduce themselves, and we wouldn't stop to think that we could introduce ourselves on Sunday morning so that everybody knew who everybody was. But they also have patterns of sharing their story, and particularly the higher power in their life, in a very open way, so that people that are seeking can hear how someone else has found that faith. And I think, wow, can we, can we learn from that? Can we offer what we found in a, in a different way? Our lives are enriched by being part of rock, wood, and stone, and coming to know the Holy One in new ways in this place. My question to Jesus when he says, what can I do for you, is can you show us how to share our stories with others so that other people can come to know the gift of being a part of this community? me to share a little bit about Reformation because it's Reformation Sunday today um, and so that was a good test of my church history knowledge to see what I remembered um, that Reformation Sunday has been celebrated for about 507 years because the date that we mark is the date that Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses to the door of the Catholic Church um, criticizing the work the church was doing and demanding that we make a change and that we find a better way to be a church in the world. So that was on October 31st, 1517, in case any of you remember that date. <laughs> uh, so the, um, his issue with the church was that he thought the church was taking advantage of people because 
the priests and the elders of the church, um, they held all of the knowledge of the scripture because very few people could read and even fewer people had access to the scriptures at the time um, because printing was uh, not really in existence. So the, to have a copy of the scriptures would have been incredibly expensive. So most people felt only could believe what the church told them about God. And Martin Luther saw the harm that was doing, especially to um, poorer people who uh, didn't have the money to support the church in the way the church was demanding. Um, so he wanted people to be able to connect to God first, not to have the church as an intermediary and to have access to the scripture themselves. So it was a reminder that church is important and connecting in community is important, but God works through everyone, not just through um, the leaders we lift up as a church. Um, so we thought that if you trust in God to guide you would be a good hymn to celebrate Reformation Sunday because it reminds us that we all have that connection to God. And it was written only about 70 years after the Reformation, so it's a good old hymn. Um, so we're going to have uh, Patty and Dad do the first verse. The whole choir is going to sing the third verse, and then we're going to, second verse, <laughs> I got the verse ahead of myself, and the third verse we're going to come together and sing as a congregation. So I want you to sing nice and loud so that on the recording it's not just the choir's verse, because we're so much closer to the hour, we need your voices to be strong to make sure that you um, have big loud voices on the third verse, and the words will be on the screen. is the time in, in our worship where we uh, give thanks to God for all the good things that we've received and our thanks is in, a, in a, our offering and I was walking through the church on Friday night and I said, oh Amanda, look there's something in the offering plate. So it's lovely to find little gifts in the offering plate, that's what they're there for. And we know that many of you give through e-transfers and, and through checks and, and 
um, and through PAR. And PAR is a big help for Amanda because she knows what's coming in and she doesn't get quite so anxious when she knows that that's coming in. But however you give and your time that you give, um, all the folks that were involved in, in breakfast and, and in uh, faith food and, and help, um, all the things that you take part in, uh, we're so grateful that you are here and with us. Let us pray. Generous God, we give thanks for the gift of this community where we can gather to know you and where we can create relationships and uh, work together to be your hands and feet in the world. May what we offer serve you faithfully. Amen. Join me in our prayers of the people. Creator God, we are, are grateful uh, for the beauty of the world around us at this time of year, and we're thankful um, for the harvest, and we think of uh, farmers as they take off their crops, and those folks that uh, dry crops and take them to market and sell them, and all the people involved in, in providing food for us and, and the world, and we, we pray that you would be that with them, and that you would be with all of us as we recognize that there is enough food in the world for everyone, but that we need to be a part of, of sharing that food. And we ask that you would show us ways to, to share and make sure there's enough for all. God, where people are experiencing war, violence, injustice, or abuse, we pray for your peace. And we think especially this morning of Israel and Iran. There have been attacks uh, from Israel to Iran. And, and governments are posturing and we pray that there will be voices in the midst that would ask for peace and would offer paths forward that can be accepted. We ask for the same for Ukraine and Russia, for the Congo and other places where there's violence. Where there's violence and abuse in families, we, we ask that people would find paths forward paths to bring healing and reconciliation, or paths to separate so that people can be safe and heal. In our prayer cycle, we lift up to you the people of Canada and the United States. We pray for our Black, First Nation, Métis, South Asian, LGBTQ2IS, class, Jewish, and Muslim siblings, and all those who experience discrimination. May people be seen for who they are and the gifts they bring not defined by the color of their skin or their religion or the place they live. God, we pray for all those struggling with physical or mental illness, those facing and recovering from accidents and surgery. We, we pray for healing and hope. We ask for strength and patience for caregivers. God, we pray for companionship for the lonely and refuge for the homeless. God, we lift up to you the church. We, wherever people gather to worship in temple or mosque or synagogue or church, we ask that we might be embraced by your love and share that love with others. We pray for our congregations of rock, wood, and stone, asking your blessing on each person gathered here and those who can't be with us. We pray by name for Bet, Bev, Bill, Connie, Charlene, Don, Deborah, Doug and Virginia, Evelyn, Grace, Harry, Heather, Joan, Kathy, Ken, Linda, Mabel, Marion, Mary, Mike, Paul, Ryan, Sebastian, Sandy, Sarah, Tammy, Thane, Wendy, Werner, and Victoria. We pray for our partners in Anishinaabeg Outreach, the Canadian Foods Greens Bank, East London Community Services, the Ecumenical Campus Ministry, Mission and Service, the Rainbow Chorus, Royal City Mission, the Rural Women's Support Program. We pray for Chalmers Community Centre and Hope House, for our neighbouring church in Wow, Egmontville United, for our neighbours in Mills and Rockwood Presbyterian, for Prairie to Pine Regional Council, and the ministers, members, friends, and staff of our United Church in Western Ontario waterways across Canada and around the world. God, hear our prayers, spoken and unspoken, and answer in your love. 
We pray this with the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Please join in singing number 603 in loving partnership we come. Thank you. 